Hi, my name is Tom Barnhart. I'm here with, uh, from Business Polska, and I'm here with Michael Duminski, who is the Chief Advisor to the British Polish Chamber of Commerce. Uh, Hi, Michael, Tom. Nice to see you again, like many times. Uh, I think you've been 16 years in the BPCC already. Yeah, yeah this month, yeah. We are doing uh, this monthly feature on uh, British trade with uh, Poland and Polish trade with the, U with the UK. And we'd like to kind of get a little bit of insights from you mm -hmm. on uh, some of the trends, some of the factors mm -hmm. uh, behind the scenes with the British trade investment into Poland, but also Polish companies mm -hmm. who might be moving into the UK. Mm -hmm. um, so how do you want to, where do you want to start with that broad subject? Well, let's start with trade, let's start with exports okay. um, in both directions. That um, The uncertainty about Brexit and the, the weakness of the pound has um, meant that uh, the UK is no longer Poland's second largest export market. It's fallen back to third place and mm. Czechia is now number two. Um, we can see also if, if you're denominating the value of your exports in Zloty, that actually exports from Poland to the UK have gone down okay. compared to the first half of last year, looking at the first half of this year. Mm -hmm. uh, if we look at, at it in terms of a weakening sterling, then mm -hmm. the, 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 there's still growth, yeah. but we're looking in sterling terms. Um, a lot of Polish companies are uncertain as what's going to happen they're uncertain about whether it's going to be hard brexit no deal brexit soft brexit somehow something that's negotiated does anyone know yet really? um probably not no yeah. we'll probably be much nearer to finding out towards the end of october okay. but at the moment there's a lot of uncertainty and businesses don't like uncertainty investors don't like uncertainty and our members, in particular in the, the real estate area and the advisory area, are reporting that there is a, an undercurrent of companies leaving Hesitating. the UK, okay. thinking of leaving the UK, not necessarily British capital, maybe Japanese firms, American firms, Indian firms, um, that want the certainty of knowing that they're based in the European Union, in the customs union, the single European market. Okay. Uh, we can also see that existing financial services companies, big UK banks, insurers, are moving some of their business headquarters for Europe from the UK to the mainland or to Ireland. Uh, and standard this Chartered has moved in on the Standard Chartered, Warsaw, one example, deal. yes. Uh, HSBC's European HQ is now in Paris. Uh, Lloyds of London, uh, now in Brussels, okay. um, Dublin, Frankfurt, also attracting this type of business. Uh, Poland is attracting back office. You, you mentioned um, Standard Chartered, mm -hmm. uh, JP Morgan Chase also moving into Warsaw. Um, at the same time, there's big demand for similar groups of people, IT staff um, in general, back office, middle office, staff. Um, Poland at the moment has record low unemployment. Yes. Um, according to Eurostat, Poland's unemployment is lower than that of the UK. Yeah, interesting. <laughs> uh, next question is whether Poles will start drifting back to, to Poland. Mm -hmm. um, we're not really seeing much sign of that mm -hmm. at the moment. Yeah. Poles who've been in the UK for a, a long while, who've set, set in roots, they've got children in British schools who bought houses, flats in the UK, um, they're most it's likely certainly. going to stay. Yeah. They're going to apply for settled status and then go the route for citizenship. Mm -hmm. But uh, the Poles who've been um, in the UK for a shorter while, um, they may be more inclined to return to Poland, not necessarily to the places from which they've come, but to those cities where uh, the economy is booming. Mm -hmm. And if you bear in mind that the real unemployment rate in Poznan is something like 0.8%. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. uh, if you look around Warsaw and you see these vast numbers of Ukrainians who are coming in to work in construction, in, in cleaning, in healthcare. Um, my bus yeah. stops outside the um, oncology centre okay. in Sinov uh -huh. and um, you know, the bus empties and all of these people are talking Ukrainian mm -hmm. and the, you know, the cleaners and yeah. cooks and porters and, yeah. and the Warsaw economy would be much weaker uh, were it not for this uh, huge influx of uh, migrant workers. Mm -hmm. uh, so at the moment, um, looking at our members, that their biggest concern really is about recruitment and retention of mm -hmm. key staff. Mm -hmm. Okay. And uh, touching on this kind of silver lining of, the, uh, of Brexit potential plus Poland, um, you 
give much credence to the theory that Poland will benefit substantially from the Brexit in terms of uh, relocation of offices. Do you see more of that coming? Yes, I think so. Not just offices, but also logistics centers and manufacturing. Okay. That we can also see something which we've never really observed in the past, which is smaller UK manufacturers coming to Poland, um, mm -hmm. mainly in the supply chain, automotive, aerospace, mm -hmm. um, opening small factories here um, under the radar, mm -hmm. uh, not really noticeable, not really a, a macroeconomic trend. Uh, but even so, it, it's happening. And it's mainly happening because their clients are saying, we want you much closer to our factories. Supply uh, chain issues. Yeah, okay. yeah. Uh, logistics, yeah. So similarly with warehousing, that uh, um, companies that are servicing the EU from the UK mm -hmm. are very worried about the prospects of a no-deal Brexit, what that mean, will mean for logistics on, on the border. So what will the UK, uh, by the way, I was in Konica the last couple of days mm -hmm. and we saw the UKTI had a very big uh, exhibition that had actually mm. lots of whiskeys there, among <laughs> yes. other things, quite easy. Yeah. Uh, but in terms of uh, next year with Brexit, will the UK be doing more to sort of trumpet themselves that they're still in the game? Or what might they be doing here or you all might be doing in the UK to say, hey, don't forget about us, wave the flag a little bit. Is there mm. something around that concept? Yeah, it is, but it, it is worrying because the key thing to bear in mind about the UK is that it's a, as a country, as an economy, it manufactures too little. Mm -hmm. That um, manufacturing industry is about 9% of the UK's value-added GDP. That compares to 20% of Poland's, 22% of Germany's. Mm -hmm. um, the US, for example, could become an autarkic self Yes. Uh, self-servicing economy um, cutting out the rest of the world and it, it's big enough it's is dynamic enough to do it uh, but the UK um, was winding down manufacturing um, and saying right we will do services which is fine as long as you still have access to your largest overseas market which is the EU 27 yeah. now if the UK cannot negotiate passporting rights for UK financial service providers, then it's going to be rather difficult to make up that shortfall. Mm. Bearing in mind that last year the UK had a trade deficit of around £25 billion, but if you just look at goods, the trade deficit in goods was £135 billion. Mm. And that difference was made up by services, services yeah. by a massive surplus. Mm in the export of services. That can only happen in a friction-free single market. So it's going to be extremely difficult in the event of a non, no deal, hard Brexit, to see how the UK is going to keep that going. So essentially the UK is condemned to importing goods because it doesn't manufacture mm -hmm. enough. Uh, question is where are those goods going to come from? Will they flood in from, from China, from, from the US, from, from Thailand, Malaysia? Mm -hmm what chances will Poland have compared to its competitors in, say, Germany, Holland, France, Spain, mm -hmm. um, faced with sudden increase in, in tariffs and in border bureaucracy. Uh, th these are all extremely worrying mm -hmm. questions mm -hmm. for, for Polish exporters. Okay. And one question, one, uh, on the last note, a question about missing Polish exporters, but how about... Polish companies expand into the UK, yes. m and activity, are yeah. there also some opportunities mm -hmm. for Polish companies looking to expand more aggressively into the UK? I think so. I think that uh, Polish companies, uh, they reach a, a kind of um, critical mass, a kind of tipping point mm -hmm. where you can see Polish capital beginning to flex its muscles abroad. Um, Polish companies are looking at uh, M&A targets in the UK. We've had some good examples. Telefonica Kable buying JDR Cable, for example. Uh, another example is SK, SDK Drive Tech from Radomsko buying Webster Drives from Bolton, a company with 138 years of tradition, yeah, making yeah. drive shafts for tanks and, hmm. and ships. Uh, now owned by a Polish company. Mm. Um, reserved opening its flagship store on, on uh, Oxford Street. Uh, Inglot has something like 30 stores around the UK. Um, Fakro um, has a, a showroom in London and a service centre in the Midlands. Um, Novistil, uh, office furniture, mm. one of the three largest office furniture manufacturers in Europe. They've been in the UK for about 20 years. Mm 
doing very well. Uh, so we're seeing more and more of this. We're also seeing the, 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 the newcomer in all of this is uh, in IT. Um, a lot of Polish tech firms who've got some really great solutions that they can go global with are choosing London as uh, a springboard for scaling up and going global. Mm -hmm. um, London is a great place in terms of the uh, ecosystem. That You've got loads of business angels and venture capitalists and, and private equity funds. Um, access to capital is good. Access to knowledge is good. Also the marketing and those those long-held um, personal connections with North America, with the, with the, sure. the Commonwealth. Sure. Uh, so for many Polish companies, um, London is an ideal location. Well, on that note, Michael, thanks for your time, and we'll thank check you. back in with you in six months on the Brexit, and maybe there'll be some more definitive news at that point. Yeah, thank you. Thanks.